Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a Springfield Armory Hellcat OSP and the Kimber R7 Mako. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis X and Core Belts. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links. It will often save you money, never will cost you any additional money, and helps the channel. Thank you. The Hellcat's been around for a little while. You know, Springfield's entry into that high capacity micro compact market. It originally came out in a regular version only, no optics ready, and then they came out with the OSP version. This can be had from Springfield with the shield already installed, or you can buy the optics ready version and install either the shield or the optic of your choice. The R7 is the same thing. It can come with the Crimson Trace that you see on it pre installed. That's how we got this one. Uh, or you can get it just optics ready and install the optic yourself later. Both of them give you that flexibility. Kimber, yeah, this is kind of new to the polymer gun market for Kimber. Previously they tended to do metal guns, primarily 1911 style guns. Then they got into revolvers. We did actually did a review on their revolver and then they make this entry into that striker fired polymer guns. So this is kind of new for Kimber. Of course, Springfield's been doing the polymer striker guns for quite a long time, so it wasn't as much of a stretch for them. This particular one also has a Viridian E-Series laser on it. And occasionally somebody will comment, why do you need both? Well, this is kind of a demo gun, so we've got it to demo with an optic, with the laser. Most people would probably pick one or the other, even though an optic versus a laser, they each have their advantages. There may be some reasons why you would want to have both. But in this case, rather than having to have another one just to put a laser on, I put both on the same gun to demo either of those two capabilities. So we're comparing these two because they're both higher capacity, they're both optics ready, they both come can, are either available with or can have added a low profile optic. But the review isn't about the optics, it's more about the guns themselves. This particular one also has a Talon grip, courtesy of Talon grips, which just makes the grip a little bit bigger. Uh, the one that Striker, or I'm sorry, Hammer uses all the time to carry is uh, it's got a hog grip on it to make the grip even thicker, which starts to a little bit defeat the small size of it, but he's got larger hands, it fits better in his hands. So, one thing I am going to note about this early on the range footage you're going to see is not from this configuration as you see it at the moment because a screw fell out. Now, I'm not going to ding the quality of either the optic or the Springfield. I think I didn't probably get the threads as super clean as I needed to before I put the screws in, so the Loctite probably didn't hold. Additionally, this is a polymer optic, so you can't just crank it down super tight because the plastic will give a little bit and loosen up. So I'm going to say that's on me. I've ordered a replacement screw. But when we got to the range with it, I noticed it was kind of scattering around. And, you know, nobody's perfect, but I'm not usually that bad. And after figure, trying to re-zero it, I did figure out that with the screw miss, and of course, it can flex enough to make a difference. That, again, that's probably me. When I installed it, I didn't get it quite right. If I go over here to the R7, of course, this one came factory installed. I'm pretty sure I cleared this one, but I'm going to clear it again just to make sure. This one, when it f came out, they really kind of bragged it up on their site. They bragged it up a lot. And there's a few places where they are actually totally honest on their site, but they phrase things in such a way you may interpret it differently, such as the capacity. So the capacity on this, they advertise as 12 and 14, but the magazines are 11 and 13. They're counting the plus one. Now in the fine print, they do mention that that is including the plus one, but most manufacturers, when they quote their capacity, will quote it explicitly as magazine, plus one, or just magazine which the Springfield, they quote it as magazine, but of course you can plus one this just like anything else. But this is 11, 13, or 15 magazine, and then of course plus one. So you might be inclined to think, just if you kind of cursorily look at the marketing materials, that the Kimber holds an extra round. It doesn't, they're both equal. And the Hellcat does have the option of going all the way up to a 15 round extended magazine. This is the magazine for the Hellcat Pro, and when you, if you buy one, it'll come with a sleeve to either fit this, or of course the Pro, you would use it without the sleeve. It's also available with a 13 round magazine. And you can still get the 11 round magazine with a pinky extender, but in all honesty, it's 
not much different if you have the uh, 13 round magazine if you put it in there. So if you're going to use the pinky extender I would almost just use the 13 round magazine. If I go to the Kember you have the flush magazine which isn't truly flush but it's it's mostly flush and it kind of kind of squares off the bottom of the gun and that is the 11 round magazine and then if I put the extended magazine in which is the 13 round magazine it says 10 here and it doesn't have anything on the other side but this bottom plate is basically an extender and it extends it down you get a three finger grip so this is basically a plus two extender on top of the 11 rounds and i know it said 10 but it's actually 11. there just isn't a witness hole for that 11th round in the magazine body let's go look at the sizes between the two of these so i'm going to put the flush mag in each one of them so i'm going to use this empty 22 case to set them on because of the red dot the red dot makes it a little bit difficult to compare them side by side but by putting it up on that case I can do that more easily so what you'll see is that the Mako is just a little bit taller not much the difference is 0.3 inches 4 inches versus 4.3 it's a little bit longer 6.2 versus 6 inches and they're about the same thickness so the Mako is just a hair bigger than the Hellcat but not enough that's going to make a difference from a weight perspective, the Hellcat is 17.9 ounces and the Mako is 22.7 ounces. Part of that height at the back is the Springfield's kind of flat and the magazine base plate's kind of canted. So it's taller at the back on the R7 than it is at the front. So it kind of makes it kind of a little difficult to see. And then when you come down to the length, according to the measurements they're giving, and I'm going to try to get these to be beaver tail to beaver tail. It says 0.2 inches. It looks like a little bit more than 0.2 inch difference, but 6 versus 6.2. Whether that's actually 0.2 or not, which kind of doesn't look like it is, it's not enough to make a difference. The dimensional difference between these isn't going to make the decision for you. Now, one thing that may influence it is some of the functionality. So the Hellcat is, it's got forward and backward slide, or forward and back slide, really, or slide serration, so I can get that right. Just like the R7. The Hellcat comes with U-dot sights. The front sight is a night sight and of course it has the optic on it. And the Mako comes with three dot sights. They're night sights with a ring and the front one has a red insert. Both of the sights are good. Both of the sights are nice. Now one thing I will note is that the Hellcat's rear sight is not a night sight where the Mako is. So the Mako has a bit of an advantage there. I'm going to bring out a Hellcat Pro because this particular trigger is not the stock trigger. So I want to do apples to apples when comparing the trigger. So I'm going to temporarily set that aside, bring out this Hellcat Pro, which has the factory trigger on it. This is the factory Gen 2 trigger. There were some complaints on some of the original Hellcats that if you push the trigger sideways, if basically if you operated the trigger incorrectly, you could actually get the inertial toggle to hang up on the frame and not be able to pull the trigger. The only way that could happen is if you kind of pulled it wrong, but they've made some enhancements to the trigger, solving that little issue. So even if you do it incorrectly, you're, you've got a better chance of doing it right as long as you do actually depress the inertial toggle. If you catch the trigger body itself, it won't fire, and it's, that's by design on all of these. But on the Gen 2 trigger, whether you catch it right or wrong, as long as you do it correctly, you're gonna get it to work. So make sure it's cycled there's the take up kind of a decent amount of take up and then a nice short crisp break right around the five and a half pound mark not the shortest reset but it's 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 a reasonable reset you're right on the wall maybe just a hair of take up and then a nice clean break again the factory trigger on the Hellcat is nice now we go to the factory trigger, which is, this is the factory trigger on the Mako. When they talked this trigger, they kind of talked it up as the best trigger on the planet. When we first took this gun to the range, the trigger was okay. Of course, to pull up the inertial toggle, there's a little bit of grit in the take up and you get onto a wall. And then a nice crisp wall, nice smooth break, kind of a light break. The trigger on this has definitely improved through use. So when I first used the trigger, if you saw the first review I did on it, the trigger was okay. 
and I actually kind of took off points because I bragged about how good the trigger was and it really was just okay. The trigger now is actually quite nice. It may still not meet the marketing bravado, but it's actually a quite a good trigger. There's the reset, a kind of a shorter reset than the Hellcat, a little bit of take up to get back on the wall, and then of course that nice, fairly light, crisp break. There's a little bit of grittiness in the trigger. In fact, you could kind of see it as I was letting it out. It kind of stutters out as I take the tension off it. And then a little bit of kind of a little bit of grit going back on. So hopefully if more use of the trigger, that grit would actually go away. And the trigger actually could turn into a trigger that actually meets their, their marketing. Overall, I think that this is a good first try for Kimber possibly a little bit more attention to the precision and the manufacturing so that it requires a little less break in for the trigger to be what they want it to be or what they want to claim it to be. But once it reaches that, it actually is quite a nice trigger. So if I were reviewing the gun from the beginning in the state that it's in now, I probably would have given the trigger higher marks. The gun did work. It's been a reliable gun and it is a comfortable gun, whether you've got the flush mag in it and you get your two finger grip, or whether you've got the extended mag in it, but put it in the correct way, and you get your three finger, well, two and a half finger grip. I'm gonna do a kind of a side by side again, but I'm gonna leave the extended mag in this, and I'm gonna put it in the front, and then I'm gonna take the Springfield with its various magazines. So we'll start with the pinky extender. So at this point, we've just got the 11 round capacity and the Kimber it has a bit of an advantage because this is an actually is actually an extended mag. You'll see that they're almost identical at the front, and of course the Springfield is shorter at the back because it can'ts down. But if I take the Springfield and I go to the 13 round magazine, so now I've got equivalent capacity. So these are apples to apples on capacity. The Kimber is just a hair taller, only again because the Springfield is flush, kind of a flat square and the Kimber kicks up at the back a little bit. So when you've got capacity apples to apples, the height is equivalent, it's basically the same. And then if I go to the extended magazine, where now we have a capacity advantage in the Springfield, you'll see that the Springfield, of course, is taller, but not a lot taller to get that extra two rounds of capacity. So now I've got 15 rounds in the Springfield. And when you do the Springfield with the 15 rounds, you're getting a full three finger grip. This would be equivalent basically to the Hellcat Pro, and the only difference is, is that you've got a break here where the magazine and the, the sleeve inner align versus just a solid grip. So what you're gonna, I think, find is capacity and dimensions is not gonna make the decision for you on these unless you're really wanting the extended capacity, in which case you would go with the Hellcat because at the moment, right now, 13 plus one is as high as you go in the Kimber and you can get up to 15 plus water for a total of 16 rounds with the Hellcat with the extended magazine. Both of these are easy to live with as well as maintaining them. This has got your Glock style little pull downs. You pull these down, you pull the slide back, pull the trigger, pull the slide back, kind of pull these down and it slides apart. The Springfield works similarly. You lock the slide back, you flip this up and take it apart. This might be a little bit easier for somebody that has strength issues in their hands than the pull downs, but both of them are toolless and easy to live with. So when you look at what you're getting here, anywhere from 11 to 13 or 15 plus one, in really a very small gun on both of these. Whereas not too long ago, this would have been a small gun. This is an XDM 3.8 compact. This one holds 13 rounds in its flush magazine, but you can see it's much longer, much thicker, and much taller. So the world has really moved on from this being small to these, especially with their flush magazines being small and holding actually equal or more than they, uh, what used to be a small gun. Overall, which one would I choose? I would probably choose the Hellcat. It's got more of a track record. It's got more aftermarket support. And these Hellcats have worked from day one, the ones that we've used. The Kimber I do think is a good entry and if you're willing to go through a little bit to get the trigger working, you know, polish through use, get everything up and running, I do think it's a solid entry. This one has been functionally reliable. It just it kind of might have been uh, offset a little bit by it didn't meet the marketing expectations. They really talked it up a lot and it kind of came in short of that, but 
now that I'm using it, it's approaching that. This met the marketing expectations from day one. What they bragged it to be and what it turned out to be are the same and have stayed that way. Other than that, either one of these I think is going to be a good choice, especially if you like Kimbers, you've got a lot of other Kimbers, so you, know, you like the brand, I think you'd be doing well with that. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, Getter, Rumble, pretty much everywhere. And thank you.